Cool, what's up guys? Justin here from the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp landscaping modeling tutorial. So in this video we're going to continue our landscape modeling that we started last week. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so if you remember, last week we started off by modeling out this basic landscape um, for this backyard. This week what we need to do is we need to go through and we need to actually furnish this, um, add the different furniture items and the different plants. So um, to start off, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do some quick organization. So if you remember at the end of last week's video, I created this fence. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over into the outliner and I'm gonna organize this real quick so you can see how all of these different posts and boards got brought in when I created these copies. Well, I'm just gonna do a shift click and then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna group these and I'm just gonna name this something like fence. And so when I name this something like fence, you can see how what I've done is I've basically grouped this so that I don't have all these individual things in here. I can also minimize everything so I can actually see what I'm working with. And then I can just go through and I can just um, rename the rest of these as well. Um, and this is gonna get important because what we're gonna do is we're gonna start creating groups for our furniture and our plants. And we don't want them all in here just like scattered because it can be really hard to control them. So I'm gonna go through and rename things and group them real quick and then we'll come back and and, uh, keep going. Alright, so now we've got everything kind of organized. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start by let's add in our trellis. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and model out my trellis. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create kind of a simple trellis for right now. We're not gonna get too in depth with it. So I'm assuming this is gonna have some kind of a support post over here. We'll go ahead and call it seven and a half by seven and a half. And I'm just gonna use the rectangle tool in order to rough that out. And then I'm just gonna push pull this up so that it's level with my roof. And then I'm just gonna take the whole thing and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make it a component and we're just gonna call this a support post. And then I'm just going to move this and make a copy of it. So in this case, I'm gonna move this over 12 feet using the move tool in copy mode. And then I'm just gonna take these and I'm gonna make a copy of one of them and I'm gonna move that out 12 feet and notice how because we created these as components, what's gonna happen if I try to make a change to this one is the others are going to change as well. You can kind of see that in the background. Well, what I wanna do instead is before I do that, I wanna right click on this and I wanna make it unique. That way when I make a change to this one, it's not going to adjust the others. And then when I make a copy of it, again, using the move tool in copy mode aligned over here, then that's gonna work out kind of the way that we want it to work. And from a constructability standpoint, you may need to move these in a little bit or make some other changes. It might also be easier to just have this right on the outside of the patio, but we're gonna leave it as is for right now. So you can see how they're kind of aligned on the top. And so I'm gonna assume that these are gonna have some kind of support posts um, or support beams on the top running the perimeter here. I'm not gonna get super in depth on this. Um, for this, I'm just gonna assume this is gonna have the same thickness as my post. And we're gonna say that it's gonna be, call it, we'll call it seven and a half inches high. And all I'm gonna do is just push pull this across like this. And I'm gonna assume that we're gonna have basically support beams running all the way around the outside of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use the push pull tool and I'm gonna tap the control key and click on this face and then click again in order to create another face right here that I can extrude from. And I'm just gonna use that to extrude this across. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna reverse this face. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other corners as well. And we'll just continue this all the way around our structure. And then we could assume that we'd have some kind of vertical supports running this way. So I'm just gonna model out Probably what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put these in a group so my geometry doesn't merge, but then I'm just gonna model out um, what, those, um, what those supports might look like. So these might just be some simple, maybe like four by sixes or something like that. So we're gonna say this is gonna have a height of five and a half. It's gonna have a width of, we'll call it three and a half. And then we'll just extrude this across and I'll just triple click on this and make it a component. And then I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a, an array of this. And so I'm assuming this is probably gonna have a width of maybe like 24 inches on center. So I'm just going to type a value of 24 and then I'll type in times five or times six and hit the enter key. It might actually be better instead to use the divide function 
So if I make a copy using the move tool right here and then type in um, the forward slash and a value of five, then that's gonna give us these supports right here. And then what we can do is we can model out the shade providing pieces that are gonna run on the top. And we can assume there's gonna be more of those. Maybe they're gonna be like a white two by four or something like that. Um, it really kind of depends on the design that you want. But what we're gonna do in this situation is we're just going to model out the profile like this. We'll go ahead and extrude this across. So it's aligned with the end here. And we'll do the same thing over here. We'll just triple click on that and we'll make it a component and we'll just call it two by four shading board. I don't know what the technical term is for that, but we'll just create copies of this the same way. So we'll just use the move tool in copy mode. Create a copy straight across and then we'll type in divided by, we'll call it maybe 12 something like that. So that's gonna get us close enough on this for what we want right here. Obviously this might get more decorative or something like that, but it gives you a good idea of how we could construct something like this. The cool thing about the way that we've modeled this is now if I double click in here and I push pull this out, because these are modeled as components, they'll all change. So I could set this so that it has like a 12 inch overhang. Then I can do the same thing over here. And notice how I only have to edit one of these in order to get the others to work. So now we've got our shade structure in here and what we might do with that is just put it all in a group. We'll just call it shade structure like this. So, and we might adjust that, make it bigger, smaller, or something else um, in the future. But for right now, we're gonna call that good. So now what I wanna do is I wanna start adding plants and I wanna start adding furniture. And so most of the time, I try to get these things out of the 3D warehouse only because I don't wanna model them myself. So you should really try to avoid modeling things like furniture and things like plants, if at all possible, um, unless you need something super custom, just cause that's a lot of modeling work for not a lot of gain. And so what I would do is let's go ahead and let's say we want to start adding our plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the 3D warehouse and I'm going to start looking for plants. So in this case, I'm just going to go in, I'm just going to type in, we're going to say tree. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm not in products. I want to make sure that I'm in models right here. And usually I like to sort by popularity. That's going to give you the best trees that are in the warehouse, or at least the ones that people are using the most. And so now you have to be a little bit careful when you start bringing trees in, um, because what happens is you can start bringing these in and they just have a lot of different polygons in them. And so the polygons can really slow down your model. Um, and trees are probably, trees and shrubs and plants are probably the worst offenders of this. So um, like for example, you could bring in a one megabyte file. That's probably not that big of a deal as long as you don't have a bunch of them. But when you start getting into plants that are just giant, and let's see if any of these are big. So this one's like five megabytes. Um, I'm sure there's some others in here. This is pretty good right here. But you just have to be kind of careful. Don't bring in the five megabyte trees unless you absolutely need them for something. Usually what I'll do in that situation is I'll bring in a lightweight tree for modeling and then I'll swap it out for a heavier one in a rendering program that's more suited for this kind of thing. Um, in this case, um, any of these Arvor or Arvore, I'm not sure how you say that, trees look like they're gonna be okay from a size standpoint. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring one of those in over here. And I might create a couple of these right here. But again, you need to be kind of careful. Um, just be aware of your polygon count and what's going on in there um, because this can get really heavy really fast. And so usually what I like to do is I like to take any plants or trees that I have, put them in a group. So I would just create a group in my outliner. I would right click on this and I would call this something like vegetation. And then I would immediately put them on a tag. So inside of my tags, I would add a tag for a vegetation. And I would take this group and I would put it on that tag. And so the reason for that is I can add all of these in right here, but then I can toggle those off when I don't need them so I, that I don't take that performance hit of always rendering out all those detailed plants. But I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna go back and I'm just gonna add some different plants in here. Um, we'll put them all in our group so that we can toggle them on and off. And then uh, we'll move on to our furniture.
All right, so one thing that I want to point out, because um, I brought in these bushes right here, and you can see how these bushes have a lot of edges in them. And so whenever I move, right, when I zoom in and out, notice how this takes a second to think, and then it like reloads in all these extra edges. So that's something that's being added as a part of your styles, and it can really affect your performance. So a lot of the time when I start dealing with a bunch of plants, I'll go into my styles on the right-hand side, and under the edit tab, I'll go in and turn off profiles in my edge settings. And so what that does is all of those edges that were loading over here, notice how now they're not and my performance is a lot better. So if you ever need them, you can turn them back on. But usually when I'm working, I like to turn that off because that's basically SketchUp having to load all of these edges twice. And that can start getting really slow, really fast. So this should give us a pretty good idea of how this is gonna look right here. Um, clearly I'm not a landscape architect, but this is the process that you would follow and then you could get more detailed with it. But the other thing I wanna do is I wanna add some furniture. And so what I wanna do is go back into the 3D warehouse and I'm gonna go look for some outdoor chairs. So, and this is actually a time when um, searching inside of the products can actually be good because a lot of these models are provided from verified real world companies. So you can actually bring in like Wayfair or other um, models that are actually things that you can buy in the real world. And so for example, let's say I wanted to bring in some of these Wayfair chairs. So the first thing about this is I don't know why this is 11 megabytes. Um, again, that's gonna really affect your performance. If you do specifically want that product, that's fine, but I'm not gonna bring a bunch of 11 megabyte chairs into, um, into my model. So let's find something else. And sometimes if you can't find what you're looking for, it might be better to just go into the overall models category as well. So for example, what this does is this brings me in a great collection of things that I can use, um, like this one right here. I could bring in this whole 3D outdoor challenge model from let's see, from Big Red Koo, and I could bring that into my model, and that gives me everything that I need. So that's what I'm gonna end up doing, is I'm gonna bring that in to my model. You can download this from the 3D Warehouse. And so one thing about that is you're gonna wanna make sure, A, that you're bringing it in and it's actually on the ground. So that's something to always pay attention to when you're bringing things in from the 3D Warehouse. But then also, that you're only getting the furniture and stuff that you actually want. So for example, for me, um, probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete out this piece right here. And probably what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna explode this so these are all in here as individual objects. But then I can take this and I can move this around like this. So I can assume that my fire pit, for example, is gonna be right here. Then I can just move this and start creating some copies. So I could create a copy over here. Notice how I'm using the ground as a base point so that my stuff isn't up off the ground. So instead of clicking on the model, when I create the copy, I'm clicking on the ground and notice how then I'm not having any height issues. So we could add some chairs in here like this, and then probably something like a grill over off to the side. And in this case, this Tuscany grill might work about perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in. All right, so now you've got all these plants and all these furnishings. Probably the last thing I would do is I would take these furnishings and I would put them all in a group as well. So finish moving this around. And then I would just take all of these and just put them in their own group. So I'm gonna take all this stuff that I just added, like the barbecue grill, the different chairs, and then I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna put those in a group. I'm gonna name that group furnishings, and then I'll add a tag for furnishings as well. So now I've got this outdoor model where I can toggle my furnishings on and off, and I can also toggle my vegetation on and off like this. Then the last thing you could do, there's a few things you could do. You could export this to layout and other things like that. But the last thing we're gonna do is just set up some different views in here. So for example, let's say that I wanted to have this view right here, maybe go into my styles and pick a style that has like a blue sky instead of this gray color. So maybe something like the landscape architecture style right here. And you can toggle your profiles on and off depending on what you want to do. Um, so for me, I probably want those profiles off. And then I could just go to my view 
animation and I can just add a scene. It's gonna ask what I wanna do with the style. I'm gonna click on save as a new style for right now. But what that does is that allows me to start creating these different views in here. So for example, I could get some like first person views in here of what this might look like. And I can just right click and add another scene. So then I can toggle back and forth between these just like this. This should give you a pretty good idea of the process that we would follow though to create a landscape like this in SketchUp. So I'll link to some other videos about creating landscapes in SketchUp on the end screen here. But if you have any questions about any of this, leave a comment below and let me know. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.